Jones to right, Russell Westbrook. You love the Philadelphia Eagles. Let me get a hell yeah. What is up, everybody? <clears throat> Excuse me. What is going on? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Party on Broad. Uh, today, we are breaking down uh, a Sixers draft target named Joel Iaif out of Gonzaga. And to do so, I've got my man. He is Tiago. Follow him on Twitter, at TScabby. What's up, Tiago? We're back, man. Less than 24 hours later, <laughs> we're back after a, a great Sixers win over the Atlanta Hawks, taking a 2-1 seriously. Yeah. And sure enough, Tiago has me up bright and early, 7 a.m. the next morning. But here we are. We're, we're going to crush this guy. Uh, let's start the tape. Tiago, tell us a little bit about Joel E.I. Yeah, so Joel E.I. is a uh, French national, um, part of the youth French program. A lot of young college players are going through this program. There's a, there's a couple other names, uh, Pons from Tennessee and Olivier Sars from Kentucky, two well-known uh, players on the college scene, uh, part of that program. And Yai is also in that in that mix. Um, came into Gonzaga as a uh, 17-year-old kid, skinny kid, barely played much competitive basketball, and got into a program, man. Like, Gonzaga's program is loaded with NBA talent, loaded. I mean, the freshman team that he had, he played on, four guys went to the NBA. So uh, Rui Hachimura. Zach Collins, Killian Tilly. Uh, so a lot, you know, not a lot was asked of him um, in that first couple of years. And, you know, he, he bit his time. He, he listened to coaching. And I think that this year he finally took the leaps that many expected him to take uh, as a, you know, a, a, a kind of an international player. Um, so there's a lot to talk about here and with here. Uh, winner, proven winner, you know, you, you you read about him. Players love to play with him. You know, understands what team concept is about. Uh, played alongside Jalen Suggs this year. You know, Jalen Suggs being a top three talent in the NBA draft, and really, you know, learned how to play off the ball. Didn't really complain and really fit into that team concept. So yeah, that's that's the intro on, on Joel. Yeah, we're looking at the tape here. You can tell. You know, this is a versatile guard. Uh, he can uh, play both the one and the two. He shoots well from three. He's a really good rebounder. Um, he does, you know, put some effort to, in defensively as well. So you got to love the versatility. You got to love the shooting. You got to love the rebounding. You got to love the size. Uh, what are some of his strengths, Tiago? Yeah, I think you you touched on it first, Chris, is the ability to do a little bit of everything. So um, when you talk about the rebound, when, the rebounding, what I saw was a guy who could rebound and push the office in transition. So at his size, he's got really good handles, especially in the open court. And again, that's really where that unselfishness comes about because he played alongside Corey Kispert, which is a knockdown transition shooter. So understood that in the open court, he wasn't one of the offense. It was really Corey Kispert. It was Jalen Suggs and, and, and those guys. So ability to rebound, stay balanced, see the court entirely is, is a huge plus. Uh, for me, it's really about his impact as a cutter. I mean, I, I'm sure you probably yeah. saw that. It's showing yeah. that on the highlights. He is phenomenal at setting up defenders in space and attacking the basket off baseline cuts, you know, backdoor cuts, those types of things. And if you're looking to add motion and unlock that type of offense in your system, he is probably one of the top players to do that, uh, ranked in the 93rd percentile as a cutter uh, in college basketball. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, the, the, the unselfishness, you know, the ability to play off the ball and, and really, and I and also say this, um, you know, I, I think you could benefit from playing from some quicker decision makers. I, I think the shot, yeah. uh, I mean, we sit it right there. Like it's not a super quick release, but if he's open, it, it's fluid and it looks balanced. So I think playing a system where, you know, he, he, he's playing alongside guys who are going to move the ball around and, and, and have open looks, he can benefit more uh, in the NBA from that. So, yeah, there's a lot of toolsy things to his game. So it's a, it's a, it's a player definitely worth talking about here in the late first. Uh, Joel yeah, he shot 39% from three this past season. At Gonzaga, overall 36% on 225 attempts. Uh, what are some of his weaknesses, Tiago? So I think the question would 
Uh, Joao is, uh, what is he as a shot creator on the ball, right? Uh, and you think about, for we're talking about the Sixers, and you think about a guy like Shake Milton. Yep. Uh, Shake, one of the reasons why Shake Milton fell so far uh, in the draft was just he's not, not really a point guard, right? So ability to create in the half court is very limited, and it's got to be really uh, schemed around, you know, pick and roll and other concepts that kind of create space for him in the, in the half court. Um, Joel can be a similar type of player, I think, although I do think he's a much smarter, higher IQ player than, than Shake. But, you know, that alone really limits, I think, his impact. And if you look at him on the ball, uh, he's a little bit deliberate. And I do think that he's going to struggle with NBA physicality and NBA pressure. So, you know, but again, we don't see much of him as a point guard in Gonzaga because so much of what Jalen Suggs did with, with the Zags this year. But, you know, that I think that's going to be something that he's going to have to kind of kind of work through in the NBA game. And, and I think that if he does... Uh, now you're talking about a guy who's a really bona fide first round pick because um, all the other tools that we talked about are there with him. So I think it's a matter of really working through that and, and kind of see if he can perhaps add a little bit more size and, and strength to his game. And I will say this as a point of attack defender, um, I think, you know, he trusts his length, which is a good thing. He's a long, long guard, but uh, he's going to – I don't see him staying in front of quicker NBA yeah. guards. I mean, you see him get shook pretty easily uh, in space. So I do think that that's going to limit his positional versatility, especially as a point of attack defender. But, again, you know, if you're looking for a complementary piece to your team, a guy who can give you uh, minutes off the bench, he's definitely one of the names to keep an eye on. Yeah, he's definitely a guy that checks all the boxes. But you watch the tape. Like, he doesn't have an elite first step. Uh, he doesn't have the foot speed. He doesn't have the strength. He doesn't have that recoverability on defense. Uh, so that is what I think he needs to work on, just you know, building strength at the next level. Uh, let's talk about fit with the Sixers. You nailed it, man. I see this guy as kind of that role player uh, that would be a really good complement to a ball-dominant guy um, because of his ability to impact the game off ball. So, you know, you talk about Shake Milton. Uh, you talk about Tyrese Maxey with the ball in his hands. I think there is a pretty good fit here. What about you, Tiago? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the Sixers are probably looking for experience and mid to low usage guys who understand their roles off the ball, right? And if you're looking at Joel, he's exactly that player uh, mm -hmm. in Gonzaga. So the fit for me is, you know, working as a cutter through Joel double teams, um, working with Ben, you know, in transition, filling, filling lanes that way. And like I said earlier in the podcast, you know, if you're going to compare him him with Shake Milton, I think that you probably get a lot of the same things that you get with Shake, but just a much smarter, much more composed player, uh, which is something that Sixers struggled to get out of Shake for most of his season and his career here. So, again, it's a question of what do you value in that in that 28 spot. I don't think that he's going to be available in the second round much past that slot. So. You know, if you're sitting there and you're looking at what's available, you know, and you, and you depending on what you prioritize at that point, uh, he could be that player. But, you know, adds a little bit of size to, to your bench. You know, you can perhaps run in with Maxi. Now you got a little size to protect Tyrese. So, uh, yeah, there's def there's definitely a lot of interesting fits there with, with the Sixes for sure. Um, yeah, I, I, that whole – let me stop the tape here. The whole – Justin says Sixers should draft him just because his <laughs> name Joel. We have the Joel brothers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But when a, little have, French, a little French background too, Javel. has got those French-speaking background. I love it. <laughs> when you have like two elite guys like Matisse, like a Joel Iai, that can cut to the basket and, and you know punish a defense like that, uh, that, that always is going to be, and especially shoot from three like that, always going to be on the Sixers' radar. Uh, let's wrap it up, Thiago. Uh, where can we find you, bro? What do you got going on, man? Yeah, man, we're going to continue to do these uh, podcasts. College basketball draft is coming around in ju on ju late July. So, you know, keep looking out for these little quick hitters because there are a lot of interesting names that the Sixers should be looking at pretty closely. And there's a few more to go today to, to cover. But, yeah, this, these are exciting times, man, for sure. That is Tiago. He's like that corner piece of the puzzle. The Sixers puzzle that we all love and need. So make sure you give a follow on Twitter at T Scavia. Uh, for Tiago, for myself, thanks for watching, guys. Stay off.
Sixers win it! Wow! Oh man, Embiid just posterized Russell Westbrook! 